wondering how to troubleshoot common potty training hiccups like navigating out of power struggles, excessive praise, or when rewards might make sense. In this video, I will be covering all of that as well as our personal experience over a year later after potty training. So going through how it transferred to school, other caregivers, night training, all of that stuff is going to be in this video. It is part of a little mini series I'm doing all about toilet learning, aka the Montessori approach to toilet training. So make sure to go back check out those past videos including my potty training must have products video in part one of this where I give you a step-by-step -step guide to come up with a plan to set you and your family up for success on this journey if you guys are new here my name is Rachel from the confused mom welcome to my channel I share baby and toddler product reviews activities as well as Montessori at home tips and be sure to hit that subscribe and notification bell so you don't miss future videos in this series including my tips for troubleshooting toddler constipation my potty training book recommendations, and more. All right, tips for navigating out of a power struggle if you find yourself in one with potty training. So instead of saying things like you need to sit down on the toilet before we leave, which is just going to create a lot of pressure and a power struggle, you can make simple changes like I'm going to pee before we leave. Do you want to keep me company and sit on your potty while I'm peeing? So it becomes more about the supportive collaborative approach versus you need to pee and we're not leaving until you do, which like that's a lot of pressure on anybody. Now, if you do want to create a regular habit of your child going to the bathroom before you leave, you can provide freedom within limits. Meaning, in those first few days where you are pretty much tied to the house, start explaining natural consequences and daily rhythms for your family. What this would ultimately look like is, instead of saying, you need to sit on the potty before we leave, you'd say something like, we'll go to the park after we both sit on the potty and then put on our shoes. This way it's more about establishing a routine routine for the family. Just be prepared. It may take them an hour or two in a meltdown before they sit on the potty and leave to go to the park. And that's okay. It's your job to stay calm and patient and just stick to your plan. So if having them go to the bathroom regularly before you leave is something that you really care about, that would be kind of the way to navigate out of that power struggle. Yes, you were going to kind of get into a stalemate that first time, but they'll learn the natural consequence of like, okay, well, just like gotta brush your teeth before we read books. Um, we do certain things for our child's health. You're not letting your kid run out of the house naked. They're gonna learn like, okay, this is the rhythm of our family. These are the steps that need to happen before we're ready to leave. So this could be something that your family chooses to do. It's not something that we personally do. We use the portable potty and bring that with us instead. But you're gonna figure out what works best for your family. You know, another big one is if you see your child acting like they need to go potty, instead of saying, you look like you need to pee, let's go sit on the potty right now and kind of like, creating a sense of urgency within them, try just observing. I see you moving your legs up and down and holding yourself like you might need to pee. Your potty's right over there when you're ready simple, no power struggle, no telling them what to do with their body. As far as handling praise while toilet learning, I will be the first to admit it is really hard to not cheer when your child does start to successfully go on the potty by themselves. I just want to acknowledge that if you do it, it's not the end of the world. Don't beat yourself up, just kind of like move through it quickly and try not to make it a regular thing. Now if you are just the type of person that really likes to cheer for people, try some of these little qualifiers after you catch yourself cheering. If you catch yourself saying, wow, and you really can't stop the words from coming out there, you could say something like, wow, you went to the potty like me. Now your excitement has simply become an enthused observation. And if you catch yourself about to cheer again, instead of going, woohoo, you could do, woohoo how'd that feel for you? And this way it brings the focus back to them building their internal motivation and reward system. Either way, as long as you're keeping your praise brief, observational, and don't stress too much, you're going to not damage your child if you can't contain your excitement. Caveat to bribes and rewards when it comes to toilet learning. So this is my on Montessori approach. While I do not think potty charts, rewards, or bribes should be used initially in potty training, I do think they can have a place and that is when there's a very specific thing you're just struggling to get over the last little 
hump up. Our personal experience. Like I mentioned, we started on a half day. I love the idea of starting after a nap on a Friday. It was literally like a week after her second birthday. And truly we were like 90% done with potty training after three days. We did no underwear or bottoms when we were home. And then if we left the house and went to the park, we just did shorts and pants. If there was an accident, we all cleaned it up together. And we did not move on to the next activity until everything was cleaned up, which does take a lot of patience. <laughs> so after those three days, she could get herself to the toilet, push her pants down, use the bathroom by herself and clean up all by herself. However, she was not trained for nap time, nights, or that transferring over to caregivers. So the first thing that got tackled was transferring her potty training skills over to new care providers. And I think it took her like one or two accidents with a babysitter to be like, okay, I get it. I can talk to them. And she found her own way of communicating. So that was the easiest hurdle to tackle. The next hurdle that we really faced was nap time. Pretty quickly after she was potty trained, she started to pull her diapers off during nap time, which initially was okay because she generally woke up from her naps dry. But then if we wouldn't get to her, like as soon as she woke up from her nap, she already had taken off her diaper pretty much. As soon as we put her in her crib, she would take her diaper off. And if we wouldn't get to her right after she woke up from her nap, she would end up having an accident in her crib. What I pretty much did because she didn't want to go potty before going in for nap time. I was like, okay, that's fine. That's your choice. But if you're not going to go potty before nap time, then we're going to put you in footy pajamas because she couldn't take her diaper off in the footy pajamas. And that kind of got us over that hump. And it was pretty much just like this basic, simple thing of like, if you're not going to pee before bed, then this is what you're wearing to bed. And that pretty much took just a couple days for us to get over. Night sleep, on the other hand, was kind of like a continuation of that, but far more challenging. Basically about six months after being toilet trained is when she would start to take her diaper off for night sleep too. The baby was coming, she really associated diapers with baby and like it was becoming a thing. And this is where I say you do the best you can with timing, but like sometimes you, it's just not gonna work out perfectly. Pretty similar to the nap situation, she was just taking off her diaper and having accidents in her crib all the time. We decided to move her into a big bed so that she would have free access to her toilet. Only even though the toilet was literally an arm's reach from her bed, she would not get out of bed and go in it for like a month or two. It was just this constant thing of like, why won't you pee in the toilet? It is literally right there. What the heck is going on all day long? You go pee in the potty. Why won't you get out of bed and go right there? It was so confusing to us. So we were like, okay, let's get her out of the big bed. Let's put a crib mattress back down. And at this point, my baby had already taken her old crib. So this is where we ended up with that Newton waterproof mattress I mentioned in my potty training must have. And that thing was awesome. Awesome because if there was an accident, it was super quick dry. It was easy to clean. So by the time she got up for the day, if there was an accident, I would clean it and it would be dry again for nap time. And it definitely made things a lot easier as far as keeping my cool or reducing how much time I was cleaning up a mess. She stayed in her small bed. She liked it, but she still was not going on the potty. A month after that, I finally just caved and decided to do a sticker chart and a reward system. How I was potty trained, how my mom loves to tell the story is I was a very verbal child. We were at like Target. I wanted a Little Mermaid nightgown and she told me it was only for big girls and I needed to be in underwear in order to get that nightgown. I said, okay, fine. And two days later, I potty trained myself. So I was like, you know what? Maybe my daughter's as strong-willed as I am. Can't hurt to try it. So I pretty much got a sticker chart and if she woke up in the morning and did not have an accident, she'd get a sticker. Sure enough, she woke up the next morning, no accident. I think over the course of that first week, she only had one accident and then we retired the sticker chart after like 10 or 14 days. She literally only had like one or two accidents over the course of 14 days. She was night trained, it wasn't a thing. And so this is my caveat to using sticker charts or rewards or bribes. If you know your child has the skills, if you guys are in this like bad habit rut and you have a easy to obtain short-sighted goal, don't be afraid to blend some different approaches and just help your child get a little extra motivation to get over that last hurdle. So while I wouldn't suggest starting with rewards or potty charts, I don't think every single time going out of the bathroom should be celebrated, but I do think if you make potty charts a thing to get over like 
the last little bit of night sleep or the last little bit of going with a different care provider where it's a finite thing and not something that's going to be used forever and you do it in a way that it's not a huge deal so literally her reward was simply the sticker. She never got some big present. She never got some big prize. I think after she did a full week, I did give her a toy, but I didn't even tell her that that was what she was going to get. It was just a surprise. There wasn't a lot of pressure. We had gone through so many accidents where no pressure was added. There was no punishment. She didn't have anxiety around it, where it did make sense for us at that time. If you guys have other approaches, I'd love to hear them in the comments and make sure to go back, check out my past toilet learning series videos. And don't forget to hit that subscribe and notification bell because in my next video, I'm going to be sharing my toddler constipation tips and tricks, which I know y'all won't want to miss. Until next time, my name is Rachel. Have a good one.